Puma has only recently re-entered the running space. And their biggest problem seems to be that nobody can get their hands on the shoes. But just over a year after they initially released, I finally got a pair of Deviate Nitro Elite. And it's time to take them for a run. miles total for today where the workout was five times one mile repeats at threshold effort with one minute recoveries followed by a set of strides taking out the puma deviate nitro elite for a first run now before i give you my thoughts after just this first run i do want to go over some disclosures this is a pair of shoes that puma and tracksmith have sent to me for the purpose of review however nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite and the fact that this is a Tracksmith collaboration edition. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This is an extremely lightweight racing shoe coming in at just 6.7 ounces. And the main way that they're doing that is with the foam. This foam is Puma's Nitro foam, but it's their Nitro Elite, which means that not only is it a nitrogen infused foam and that's made through a supercritical process, the puck of material that that supercritical process starts with is not EVA like it is with some other supercritical foams, but here they're using a Piba based foam to give us this fantastic lightweight and resilient foam. Inside this foam, there is a carbon fiber plate as well, which Puma is calling their Inno plate. We've seen it in other shoes like the Deviate Nitro, not the Elite, but just regular Deviate Nitro that I ran in last year. Now, in terms of stack height, this is a 36 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 28 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. On the outsole protecting this Nitro Elite foam, we have rubber coverage that is very similar to what we saw in the DV8 Nitro, the non-Elite version, but this isn't labeled specifically as Puma Grip, so I'm guessing it's a slightly different compound. It also seems to have shorter lugs on the outsole as well, so like the lugs aren't quite as robust as it was in the non elite version of this shoe. Moving to the upper, we have an upper that reminds me a lot of the Puma Liberate that I also ran in last year. A very, very lightweight material that's made out of an upper that is literally see-through. It is a translucent material that is very strong, but also pretty flexible as well. So that way you get your foot into a very snug racing position and it's gonna be able to stay there while keeping things very, very light. The tongue is made out of that same translucent material and it's very thin and it definitely stays out of the way. Along the back, there is a material that feels kind of like almost like a suede or a felt that's in here that's really nice on the back of the ankle and there's a couple of bumper pads to help keep everything in place. Now, the last thing that I'll talk about in terms of the specs on this shoe are that there are certain Tracksmith accents in this collaboration edition of the shoe. Now, this shoe has come out as part of the podcast that celebrates Speed City or the San Jose State track team that revolutionized sprinting around the world. Tommy Smith, Lee Evans, and John Carlos all were some of the fastest men in the world at the time, all happened to go to the same school, and they all also chose to use their talents and their platform as a way of advocating for civil rights during the 1968 Olympic Games. This shoe celebrates not only their sacrifices, but also their achievements. And so some of the things that you'll see on this shoe, there is a Puma and a Tracksmith logo. And then on the insole as well, you'll see that there is that Puma and Tracksmith logo in that gold, which I feel like makes for a really nice, elegant accent. Now that I talked about what the shoe is like on paper and in photos, let me tell you what it was like to actually run with the shoe on foot. I really feel like this is nitro foam at its finest, starting with a Piba puck and then infusing nitrogen into it in a supercritical process. It makes for an absolutely fantastic, 
lightweight, super resilient, super responsive phone. All of the great words that you associate with super foams, you can apply to this shoe. It just feels so fantastic and it's incredibly light. The other really remarkable thing about it is that it doesn't feel like a super tall stack height shoe. Now at 36 millimeters of stack height in the heel, by no means is it a racing flat, but yet when you have it on foot, probably because the shoe is so light, it feels like you're running in a racing flat. In fact, a lot of times it reminded me like I was running in the Puma Liberate, which is a nitro foam shoe that I ran in last year that felt like it was so kind of low to the ground to me that the only time I could really run in it was when I was doing either a very short speed workout or if I was taking the shoe onto the track. Now the good news here though, is that with the fact that they're using Piba as the source material for this foam, this shoe can do way more than what the Puma Liberate could do. I really enjoyed this shoe at those threshold paces. I felt like the foam, the plate, everything was working really nicely together. The foam compresses in a really great way in that way that nitro foams do where you can push into it and the more you're pushing into it, the more you're getting back from the foam in a really just exhilarating kind of way. It really just feels like it's a jet engine that I could just keep ramming more and more air into it and keep getting more and more out of it. The harder I push into the shoe, the more it's giving me back. There is also carbon in the shoe, but it's not a super aggressive carbon. It's not overpowering the sensation of that nitro foam that's in this shoe, nor is it doing anything that kind of makes me feel like it's made the shoe feel a little bit firmer or doing anything that kind of disrupts the rhythm of my natural gait cycle. So I feel like everything's working really well in harmony. Combine that with a really great fitting upper that's also extremely lightweight and you really feel like this is a shoe that makes you really shine when you're running but also there's plenty of shock absorption and a little bit of pop with each step as well so it's a really exhilarating shoe to run in and it feels like you're running in a minimalist shoe even though you've got a bunch of technology underfoot the other really remarkable thing about this shoe and the reason why I feel like this is Nitro Foam at its finest is that a downside typically for me when I run in other super critical shoes that use nitrogen as the gas is that at slower paces that Nitro Foam tends to be very firm. It doesn't really enjoy kind of like running at those slower paces where you're not pushing as much into the ground. With this Nitro Elite shoe, I felt like at warm-up paces, I was able to get into a fantastic rhythm. And so I feel like the shoe has quite a bit of versatility and range in terms of the variety of kinds of running you could take it on. Now, the one thing that I will say to kind of temper my enthusiasm for this shoe just a little bit is that you're certainly going to get a lot of road feel in this shoe, whether you're running at easy paces or whether you're up at threshold pace, you're going to kind of get a little bit more of all the bumps, a little bit more of the impact from the road than you would say from like a super squishy max height, extra max height type of shoe. The other thing that I felt like was pretty unusual about it is the fact that this is at least stated as an eight millimeter drop shoe, but at those slower paces, it really felt like my foot was getting a little bit more of a stretch with each step. And so it felt like it was a much lower heel drop of a shoe. If I were to guess, I would have said it, it was like a four millimeter drop shoe, if not a zero drop shoe, although I know that Puma doesn't make zero drop shoes, but I really felt like I was getting a little bit more of it a stretch in the calf and in the Achilles. So of you guys might not appreciate that. Some of you guys might like that feeling in the sense that, you know, when you're going easier, the shoe is kind of like helping you through a wider range of motion. When you're running harder, trying to get up on the toes, the shoe can kind of like tune itself for that as well. I'm not sure how the shoe is doing it. I'm not sure how the foam is managing to do all these different things and yet somehow is putting all those things together. I do think that at least this Speed City version is available on the Puma.com website. And I do think that there is another, I think it's like a sunburst orange type of color version that is also available and in stock in case you guys want to see it. A lot of you guys probably have been just been so used to Puma not having any inventory of this shoe that you stop looking. 
That's pretty much what happened to me. So I'm really glad that this shoe came across my desk so I had a chance to put it on and get into it because it really is a fantastic shoe. Ultimately, I'll have to do a little bit more testing in terms of getting a long run in there to really prove to myself whether or not this shoe is a shoe that isn't going to bottom out on me if I'm taking it for those very long runs or for the 26.2 distance. So hit the subscribe button so you could see that video when it comes out. Right now, I just was so excited about this shoe and for the Speed City collaboration with Tracksmith that I wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as I could. So if you have any other questions about about this shoe, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you down there or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are feeling safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?